So, right, that's the uh, domestic stuff out of the way, I guess. Uh, so we're ready to go into building the system or preparing to build the system. There's quite a little bit of setup to do before we do the actual compiling, but it's all very necessary and extremely important. So let's move on to preparing the host system. So the host system is this live USB we're running now, which is Gen 2. It just exists in memory and on the flash disk. So obviously if the computer was powered down and restarted, all that would happen now is we'd, we'd return to Windows 10. So what we've got to do is we've got to set up an environment where we can start building Linux from scratch. And the first thing we've got to do is to check that the host that we've got running at the moment is actually capable of building Linux from scratch. And what this page shows you is the minimum versions of all the tools that are required. So these are the minimum number of tools that are required to build Linux from scratch and the associated versions. And quite nicely, the Linux from scratch team have provided a script and not only have they provided the script, they've actually updated it so it's a lot easier to run now. Previously, it just output the versions that were found on the system and it was a matter of going through cross-checking visually with what's printed here and it's the way that the versions are used on a lot of these packages, it, it's quite misleading sometimes. You might see something like 4.2.2 of Find Utils, and you think, oh, 4.2, oh, uh, yeah, 4.2. It's not an alphabetical order, it's a numerical order, so it could be quite confusing in your mind sometimes as to which version was the newer version. But as I say, this script now uh, does all the checking and prints all the information for you so it's a lot lot easier to use um, so what, what I've done here is I've highlighted this script so it's basically everything in this grey box move over to the uh, console and if I centre click here it will automatically paste everything that's been selected and I just press enter and you can see it's not only copied that script it's executed it straight away as well. So you can see the first thing it's done is it's checked for core utils. You can see these things here and it's printed up an OK next to all these. I've not actually yet run this on a machine that is a little bit out of date. So uh, I'm not sure what it actually prints here. Um, if it is a failure, I presume it will print fail. I, I don't know. Um, no, it prints at the word error. Uh, no, sorry, that's the PTYs. It prints error if the compiler doesn't work. Yeah, it looks like it prints error. So if there's a, any problem anywhere, it will print error. So there's no errors there. Everything's okay. All the versions are okay. We've got sim links or aliases to some of those programs that are okay. And the compiler works okay as well. So... As you can see, it's what you'd expect. This is the most recent version of the live USB. It's less than a week old. We've got the latest versions of everything effectively. Um, so we're all ready to go. So once again, it covers the, this page covers the different chapters and what gets done in each of them. So this is the chapter in at the moment, uh, chapters one to four. Then we'll move on to, uh, starting to build the preliminary or the, the temporary system and finally we'll move into building the actual system itself. So now we're going to create a new partition. There are no specific instructions for creating a partition here. There never has been um, and I kind of wished when I was a bit new to this that they would do but when I thought about it, they can't because they don't know everybody's situation. They don't know how, what disks you've got installed, what the names of the disks are, how you want it configured, etc. So all all, is, all there is here is to, just some information about uh, yeah, general information about setting up disks and partitions. Uh, 
it says here about convenience partitions. Generally, the only one that I set up separately is the boot partition. And the reason is that I configure that so it doesn't get automatically mounted because that's where the kernel is and that's the bit that can get the machine going. Even if the uh, root file system is trashed, you can use some commands on the boot line to actually get things working. So I generally keep that on a, a partition that's separate that doesn't get mounted and it has to be mounted manually if it needs to be accessed. There is no UEFI in this machine, as I said, so there's no separate EFI system required. Again, some of these, it's up to you if you want to do that, but generally it's not really required, especially if you're building Linux from scratch as uh, purely from a learning point of view. Uh, creating the system, file system on the partition. So it tells you how to create the part, the, the file system on the partition. But again, it hasn't told you what partitions to create here or anything. So I'm going to do that here. I'll show you how to delete Windows 10 and create the partitions we'll need to build Linux from scratch on. So first of all, I'm going to use a program called fdisk. Split right F disk, and if we give it the uh, parameter minus L, that lists all the fixed disks in the system. Um, so the first thing you can see here is one called Loop Zero. That's actually the host system because it's a flash drive. The way Linux does it, it mounts the image as something called a loop device, and it accesses the image via that device. So. We definitely do not want to touch that because that's the system we're running at the moment. Then we've got these def SD with a letter after them, starting at A, B, and if you've got more disks in the system, B, C, D, etc. That's these are all the actual physical disks in the system, whether they be hard disks such as this one or flash drives, and you can see that's the flash drive that I've booted from there. Um, so we've got to ensure that we don't touch this disk either because again that's what the host system has come from we've booted from this flash drive so this is the disk that we'll be modifying uh, don't worry too much about this message if you see this message on a disk that's had windows on it it's it seems to do something that's not compatible with the uh, layout of partitions generally um, always see, see this message so don't worry about that we'll, we'll be wiping, wiping these partitions anyway but you can see they're all uh, NTFS type partitions it's identified them so we know that that's the window Windows partition uh, sorry Windows disk and that is the actual hard disk also by the size of it you can see it's 500 gigabytes that is the size of the disk that's in the machine as opposed to uh, 14 uh, gigabytes or 16 gigas is advertised on the flash drive. So we can actually go into FDisk and wipe these partitions manually, but there's a quick way of doing this with a tool called WipeFS, Wipe File System. And we use a switch called minus A to wipe all the partitions, but there's also a safety switch called N which is like a dry run. So what this will do, it will run the command, it will execute it as if it was deleting the partitions, but it doesn't actually delete them. So it'll give us the output as if it had actually done it, but it doesn't actually do it. It doesn't make any changes to the disk. And then we specify the device we want to write to or work with, and then we press enter. And you can see it, it does some work and prints out that information and returns and because it's not written anything I can recall that command and it'll keep saying the same thing ad infinite because it's not actually writing anything even though it has done or it says it has done so what I need to do now I'm happy that that is the right partition you can see it actually says uh, it's a DOS partition I'm going to remove the N and get it to actually delete the partitions now. As you'd expect, it's done the same message, 
but this time because it hasn't got the N option, it has actually written to that disk, which means if I recall the command now, it won't actually do anything because there isn't anything to wipe. If I now do F disk minus L, you can see now that the uh, partitions have all been deleted, but unfortunately we've still got this GPT uh, problem error. So we can get rid of that as well when we get into F disk. So if we go into F disk, uh, into the interactive mode for this device. So I'm just highlighting that and center clicking to copy and paste, press enter and it comes up with a prompt here. You can do M for help and it gives you a list of uh, options which tell you different things it can do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create a new uh, DOS partition table because this is a basic uh, non-UEFI uh, machine. If it was a UEFI machine, I would use G to create a GPT partition table. I could in fact create a GPT partition table here but I'll keep it simple and more traditional if you like by creating a DOS partition table. So I've created the new DOS partition type, MBR type, with that identifier 0x262. I'm going to create a new partition, primary, default first partition, take the first sector, last sector I don't know, so I'm going to tell it how big I want the partition to be and it will calculate the last sector and it's created it. Now I want to create a new swap partition. Again, it's a primary. I'll take the next free partition number, which is two, the first free sector. The last sector, again, I don't know, but I know I want the swap partition to be one gigabyte in size. And it's created that. Now I need to change the type of this partition from Linux to swap. So it's the second partition. If I don't know what the numbering is for different partitions. I can do L and you can see 82 is the Linux swap. It's also got some shorthand forms here. You can type Linux here or swap for the swap. If you want to be sure, rather than taking a chance, typing in 82 and accidentally typing to 81 or something like that. And lastly, I'm going to create the partition which will hold the root file system. So again, primary, next free partition, next free sector. And because I want to use all of the disk, I can just press enter here to accept the last sector. So now if I do P to print, you can see there are all the partitions, the boot partition, the swap partition, and the root partition. So now I'll do W to write that. And then I can use the uh, Linux and Scratch book instructions to format or, if you like, create these file systems. So I want to format the boot partition. Some places recommend using ext2. I like to use ext4 because it's journaled. That means that in the event of any corruption, the journaling might be able to recover any files that are open at the time of the corruption uh, so there's a little bit of extra security downside is you lose a little bit of space but i think that's a good compromise so I format that it's only a tiny partition so it's quick i'll quickly do the boot partition sorry the root partition which is our main data partition where the operating system will be installed so this will take a little bit longer And that's done. And finally, I'm going to create the swap partition or format the swap partition rather with MK swap. And that's on dev SDA2. And that's it. So now if I do a list, yeah, I think this message will probably disappear when we install the um boot sector i think um it's a bit annoying but it's, it's not going to cause us any problems so i'm not going to worry about that too much 
So anyway, we've got the partitions all configured. We've formatted them. So they've got data structures on there. They've got file systems on there. So now we can move on to setting the LFS variable. And the LFS variable is quite important in the initial stages of building because it, it points to location where these partitions will be mounted. And it's, it's more important, even more important in the fact that if you don't get this right, you could corrupt the host file system, which probably is not that important because we're on a, a live USB. But if you're using an actual real USB uh, Linux system, uh, then you'll you'll very likely delete or overwrite libraries and programs with stuff we're going to compile if this is not set correctly, or if it's it, even if it's not set at all. Um, and that means your host file system will be trashed. Your host system will be trashed. So it's important to make sure this is set and check it if you're unsure. If you've got the slightest doubt that it's not uh, set, check it. And it's easy to check it with this command here. And you can see it's, it's told us what it's been set to. Thing is, if you don't set that, it defaults to an empty string, and then whenever it says something like uh, remove forward slash, uh, sorry, remove dollar uh, LFS forward slash user, because dollar LFS is blank, it will just remove forward slash user, and you can see why it could be so dangerous. Forward slash user is part of the host file system, so it is imperative that you double check that, and it even suggests here that you add it into the bash profile. Uh, if you think you might be rebooting, which as again, let's say, because we're using live CD, it doesn't matter. We could add that, but next time we boot, we, you know, everything in the live CD is lost. So it's pointless setting it here. But if you are using a real system, uh, you probably want to consider doing that. So mounting the partitions again, this is a bit airy fairy. It doesn't give any specifics. It gives some hints as to what to do because they don't know how you want to set up your system. So I'll just go through the commands here that I'll be using. They're based on these commands, but basically we want to create this directory. This is the mount point. It doesn't exist at the moment. So if I do ls minus l for slash mount, we've got some other directories there to do the CD-ROM and the actual uh, stuff to make the live CD work. So we'll put that command in and this will create that MNT LFS directory. There it is there. And then we need to mount that directory with the correct file system. So the file system we've got for the root is SDB, uh, sorry, SDA3. So that says it's mounted. So that will show nothing, but if we do df minus h, we can see we've got a 457 gigabyte partition with 433 gigabytes available mounted on MNT LFS and MNT LFS is pointed at by the variable LFS. And if we're using multiple partitions, mount them like this. Um, I tend to mount the boot partition at this point, but I think I seem to remember reading somewhere that it's preferable to do it when we're inside the true environment later on. So I'm not going to mount it at the moment. Uh, and in any case, it means we've got to create a boot directory, which gets created later on as well. Again, if you restart your computer, so if you're not using a live USB, you are using, you know, a real Linux system to create this. It's got some more hints there for mounting that partition automatically. Finally, we need to mount the swap partition or, or activate the swap partition. So we'll just copy that in and the swap partition is dev SDA2. So you can see that's mounted that. So if we do swap on, we can see that partition's active with a priority of minus two, which is the default, I believe. So 
it says now the new LFS partitions open for business. It's time to download the packages. 